Hello and welcome to the Investors Champion podcast. The goal of this podcast is to give you a quick but informative rundown of some interesting topics affecting UK investors and a rundown of the biggest movers in the UK share market, including AIM and some bonkers bargains for you to take a closer look at. Let's get started. Hello, Chris. Good to see you again. Hello, Lee. Good to be here as always. You've been reading a lot of interim results, haven't you? And you've been pulling your hair out with some of them, especially, should we say, Next15, which we discussed last week. But you came across Next PLC and you emailed me straight away and said, I want to do an episode on Next PLC and I want to encourage the audience to have a look at them of how an interim trading update should be presented. Absolutely. It was so obvious to me. And as you say, I've been looking at loads of results. We've had lots of interim results. This is not full year, lots of interims. And it was just something to focus on. I thought, and I'm not a retail specialist. I don't like retail stocks, but it was absolutely essential to look at these results. So, I mean, the last couple of episodes, our opinion about some really good companies to look at and equally some companies perhaps you might want to avoid, but you just wanted to highlight a company that is really the benchmark for presenting results, didn't you? And that's what we're going to go into this episode. Yeah, I would urge people, forget about the business, whether you like Next or not, whether you like their products or not, forget about it. Whether you like retail or not, whether you think the retail is good, bad, the sector is good, that is irrelevant. You have to read these results for the lesson they give in terms of presenting things to all your shareholders. This is what this is about. Forget about the likes and dislikes. That's not the lesson here. The lesson here is how to present things in an effective way. Just before we get to that, Chris, though, I want to touch on the S&P 500 because I remember a couple, well, it was a few episodes ago, we discussed the S&P 500. There was quite a lot of chatter around the potential crash. And I asked you, you know, Chris, there's a lot of chatter around, perhaps maybe this is a market crash. How do you handle this? What do you do? How do you process this? And you were like, just stay calm, relax, look at the companies that you own and double check that everything's okay. Now here we are, the S&P 500 have closed at a record high. So. I know, I know. Back to where we are, back to where we were. Yeah, I know. yeah. And that's this has all been driven by the Fed cutting interest rates by uh, half a percent. They haven't just done a quarter, they've gone for a half. I do wonder why the BOE, the Bank of England, has held back a bit. They could have done another quarter a bit earlier. But yeah, the Fed's cut it by half a percent and boom, markets are excited again. And, and up they go back near to record highs. You, you can see the contrast, can't you, in the two. The UK, as, as always, follows our friends over the water. But no, we're yeah. holding back. We're going to wait until, no, what are we, Mason, until now, November, potentially, end of the year. And then Christmas is around the corner. People are going to have other spending commitments as well. It's just late, late. We always overdo things. I just fear we should have done another quarter earlier now. And what is it? It's relevant in the grand scheme of another quarter. But mm. I think the sentiment of it would have given people a bit of a fillip, a boost. So, yeah, I'm a bit frustrated by that. Yeah. One thing you're not frustrated with, though, is the next PLC trading update, which is quite a contrast to the next 15 update that we discussed last week, isn't it? Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. And next 15 is a communications business. Well, calls it was self one previously. Next PLC, our retailer, absolutely fantastic results. Anybody that is considering investing should read, and these are just interim results. This isn't an annual report, so this isn't the full shooting match and all the detail. This is just they, what they produce in their interim results. It's 92 pages, so it's quite long. However, from the outset, it tells you exactly what they're going to talk about. They put structure of this report in bold, then they give you part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, five broken down as to what they're going to discuss. So you know automatically where to look. If you want to delve immediately into the financials, you can. But then they lead you through their whole business. And they tell you as well, they open with the overriding financial objective. They tell you what the group's overriding financial objective, that's the headline sort of statement. And they tell you what they're going to do with their excess cash. And as well, I like the honesty of things as well. So not everything goes well. And they, they were very good results, I should add. Without even delving into the financials, they were very positive. They've upped their guidance again. So they're managing expectations very well all the time. But they're honest as well. They tell us next brand, that's the next brand, because they're selling other brands now, in addition to the next brand, was down 0.9%, they say. And they admit, they say, this is potentially worrying and warrants further analysis. And you haven't got to wait to a face-to-face presentation. Everybody can tell you what their analysis is. And then they tell you exactly why there was an underperformance. And so all shareholders are privy to the same information. 
they aren't guarding it for institutions, giving them one story and retail investors another. Everybody's getting the same picture, which is really, really good. Contrasting yeah. to Next 15, isn't it, last week? Oh, it's totally different. They're giving you chapter and verse on everything. And, uh, okay, what's the argument? This is a very big company. It's got a very big financial team. They're Things are doing going well. Stuff. Things are going well. Even when, they're going ba- <laughs> even when they're going badly, they'll tell you what yeah. it is. They'll tell you exactly how things are going. But yeah, they're, they're not shirking. They're not hiding away from things. They're telling you chapter and verse. And oh, what I thought was amazing, I think for any page 18, for anybody that wants to start an online retail business, I'd urge them to just go to page 18. They tell you a headline, four essential elements of a successful online fashion platform. I think that's pretty good. I, yeah. can, I can think of many online fashion groups that should just, this is your blueprint, guys. Next is telling you how they do it. They seem to do it quite well. So I would go and try and follow them. And they're telling you how to do it, which is really good. Yeah, I found that really impressive. The comparison to streaming services. I th- who writes that sort of stuff in a trading update? Quite uh-huh. unique, isn't it? Yeah, but they don't just, they didn't just chuck out the statement, did they? That no, it's they actually present. broke it down, didn't they? They, they? Broke, they broke it down as to why they thought it was, you know, should be compared to a streaming services, which I thought was really good. Yeah, the streaming analogy, great creative content, great recommendations, ease of use, trust and reliability. And then they go on to explain how Next fits into those four categories. <laughs> yeah, it is really good for a retailer. Yeah. And, it, and, and it's no accident. This is our bellwether stock. This has been a great retail success to it. Look, I should admit, I hate retail stocks. I think they're, they're really difficult, especially in fast fashion or in fashion itself. I'm not good at this. But Next has just been such a consistent outperformer. And clearly from a financial, as a financial reader, I just think their explanation about share, around shareholder returns and dividends prices. So again, page 63, share buy- buybacks are all the rage at the moment, but very few companies actually explain their rationale for doing them and why they're doing them and what is the trigger for doing them. Next tells you exactly why they're doing them. They tell you what rate of the t- return they expect. They give you the calculation and how that's affecting their business. And, you know, they were honest enough to say, look, UK retail and physical stores is tough. It's going to continue to be tough. They're growing really strongly in online. Online's 54% of their business now, mm. but online overseas is 14% and they're making 120 million of profit. And they tell you where they're doing it. Europe's strong, they're, you know, closer to home's good, but they think they don't. They, I think there's a big opportunity in India. Uh, yeah, they said them. India, they're going to focus on India followed by the USA. So they even listed the order of priority, India, right. USA, and then followed by Japan, China, and Australia. And then they're, they're admitting, aren't they? And I think the US, they're partnering with, I think it might be Nordstrom or someone like that. And yeah, in, in India they were as well. I think they were partnering. Yeah, they, they just it seemed, seemed sensible. So many small, smaller UK companies that have been looking at go into North America, go into the States, try and do it all themselves. It's incredibly difficult. We spoke a few weeks ago about, or last week, about fever tree drinks. They're actually making a good fist of the United States, but it's been quite tough. Others are having a much bigger struggle. We, we mentioned the Next 15 business, or well, they've acquired, a, I think, a Californian business, which is, has disappointed a bit relative to when they acquired it. It's incredibly tough for small UK, even bigger ones, to really gain a foothold in the States. And even for Next, they're doing slowly, aren't they? Yeah, they are looking to do it slowly. And just to emphasize that, there's a few stats. So in 2004, retail stores accounted for 72% of the group's total sales, 70% of the profit. Today, retail accounts for 30% of the sales and just 19% of the profits. Wow. This I find amazing. And in 2004, the group only sold next branded stock. And today, 42% of their online sales come from non next branded stock so almost half of their online sales comes from other brands you know that's quite a shift isn't it i really didn't understand that bit i didn't realize that they were plugging in so many other brands but doing it carefully bit by bit and it, it built up clearly they were ahead of the game years ago with their next directory so the shift to online was probably easier for them than it was for others but look, the stock's done nicely as well over the last 10 years. Where have we gone from 60 up to 10 pounds? It's pretty good stuff. So you've had decent returns, loads of dividends along the way, special dividends, loads of share buybacks. It's just been a, a, a really terrific success story that a, a lot of people can learn from. 
And yeah. they, they've recently bought, I think, the Fat Face brand, which is struggling a bit. They bought a, a majority stake in Jules as well, which clearly Reese went as bust. Well. Reese, Reese as well. Jules was listed on AIM and it, and it flopped. And uh, But ne um, Next came along and is, it feels there's potential in that to yeah. have another brand in its own stable. My wife but, loves Reese to my detriment. <laughs> <laughs> just buy some next shares fair, fair point but yeah if, if it's just very positive i like the way as well if we talk about overseas has been doing well they see there's a big opportunity there again that was new and news to me but again they tell us don't get carried away two knots of caution they've said we are concerned that some shareholders might get carried away with the strength and potential of our overseas businesses. They're telling you, don't get carried away. This is going to take a long time. We're going to go steadily on this. We're going to, we're not going to blow up the shop with some rash move and spend our shareholders' money unwisely. I would urge people to keep have a really close look at this. When you're looking at any results from any other companies, think how Next can present them as well. I think other businesses should be learning from this. They don't have to be as comprehensive and it's extensive as next clearly their businesses are simpler but if they can explain the rationale of why they're doing things why they're making investments why they're returning money to shareholders where they feel expansion is explain tell us shareholders what you're doing we're not adversaries are we we're their partners we want them to succeed it's not like they have to give us a lot of smoke and mirrors and, and, no. and try and hide what's going on we're partners with them aren't we we i know and you've hit the nail on the head and so many of them do we don't seem to be partners it's right will the attitude what is can right. we hide from them exactly. <laughs> let's put out as little as possible let's leave everybody guessing we won't give them chapter and verse for those institutional investors that we want to keep happy we'll tell them exactly what's going behind closed doors we'll give them a nice presentation but the retail investors everybody else forget about it they can think through things maybe they're not even interested anyway yeah. If you haven't read it yet, please read it because that's the benchmark, isn't it? That's the benchmark for yeah. what a trading update should look like. Yeah. And as I say, I, I've looked through so many interim results and these are interims only for six months. So they're not for not the whole shooting, as I said. But I've been looking at so many and I thought I'd take a look at next. I've looked at them before, clearly. But it was just night and day mm. reading theirs compared to a lot of the others. I know, as I say, admittedly, some of these others look at very small companies. But some of the bigger ones, touching five, six, 600 million market cap, they can give you a little bit more, I think, yeah. in the presentations. Do you, our fundamental, own the next shares? We've got some in some portfolios, mostly for the, the growing dividend. It's never been a core stock of ours. As I say, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of retail, personally. Oh, is that I've, more of a philosophy choice as a, you avoid retail sort of yeah, area? It's a rule of firm view. We just feel that you need to be switched on, especially fashion retail. You need to have a, an eye on the market. It's quite specialized. You need to have some knowledge and really be really immersed in it. And we're not immer immersed in retail. And it's been quite a tough space, the evolution from physical stores to online, winners, losers. See, only, only a few years ago, look, everybody was waxing lyrical about Boo Who and ASOS. Look what's happened to them. They've struggled. So many other online retailers, in online, even from next day, there's the place to be, have struggled to get going as startups. So yeah, I just find it a, a very difficult space in mm. terms of visibility, reliability of income, revenue, cash flow, with the exception of a few outliers like Next. But yeah, give me Next form, format of results any day. Yeah, for the businesses that you do on. For any, for any business, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's terrific. It would make your time in the office reading trading updates much more enjoyable, I'm sure. Well, it is, yeah. As I think you put it as well. It reads really well. As it does, a, yeah. It's yeah. destructured where to go. If you, as I say, you want to avoid stuff, avoid it. But yeah, it's just a pleasure. So well yeah. done to Next. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, so the moral of this episode, if you haven't yet read Next results, please scroll down. The link is there. We'll put the link in the show notes for you. Instead of this being a 30 minute episode, it's going to be a bit shorter. Use the rest of the time. Get a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and have a read through. Absolutely. And you'd, enjoy. Be, you'd be bonkers not to. Well, that's it for today. Please subscribe for next week's episode as we will once again discuss global events, the UK share market, and some more bonkers bargains for you to take a closer look at. If you want to take a deeper dive into any of these topics and indeed more exciting and interesting companies, then please feel free to visit investorschampion.com to learn more. All the links are just in the show notes just below. Many thanks for listening and we hope you have a great day.